This is the overview video for chapter 17, Sound. This is the second of the two chapters we covered this week as we cover waves and wave phenomena, wave interference, and all the fun stuff. So uh, sound waves are one of the examples of waves that you will see in this class and actually spend a fair amount of time with. That's uh, not an artificial example like a wave on a string. I mean, there's, I guess, a wave on a guitar string, but aside from that, you know, um, waves on a musical instrument, uh, when do you see wave on a string in a, like everyday life? Sound is an example of where you, you know, you are hearing me through sound right now. <laughs> so, so the chapter starts with a section 17.1 that gives some description of sound. And um, it's, um, uh, read through it with a sound. Um, they can be represented in um, two different ways. So uh, one of the ways to represent it would be is with the, uh, I don't think this is actually showing it. This is showing the pressure, high pressure region, low pressure region. It's, uh, um, so sound waves are the kind of, compression and rarefaction here, compression and rarefaction of, um, of air molecules in air, uh, for sound wave in air. Sound can travel through solid matter and uh, through, um, through uh, liquid and uh, the description would be similar except uh, um, the, they don't have different properties than, get, than gas. Uh, gas molecules can get compressed and um, and stretch that more easily than um, solid and liquid can. So, so the, this section will give you some description of sound. Um, and now, I was expecting them to describe the displacement model, but I think that gets it on uh, in a later section as they talk about maybe um, normal modes of a standing sound, maybe a sources of musical sound. We'll see. I thought I saw them. So, sound. <laughs> um, now, speed of sound, this is something that uh, we don't spend a lot of time on. So, do skim through it, but um, so, so this does, uh, uh, this is a reminder of this super useful relationship of wave speed uh, with its uh, frequency and wavelength for periodic traveling uh, waves. So reminder of that, it's a super useful relationship. You will see that being referred to all the time. So, so you know, if you take any sound and you happen to measure its frequency and wavelength independently, that actually gives you the wave speed. So in that sense, you will measure uh, the speed of sound in one of our labs by measuring frequency and wavelength independently that gives you the wave speed. And that's a really the extent of we deal with the speed of sound. Um, there's a more kind of theoretical way you can derive uh, speed of sound here, you know, says it's a square root of elastic property divided by inertial property. That actually kind of relates to um, what you saw with the s speed of uh, um, speed of a wave in a, a stretched uh, string. It was a square root of tension force divided by the linear mass density. Kind of elastic property divided by inertial property. Uh, yeah, that's the example there. So um, for the speed of sound, um, um, yeah, these are what they say they are, and you won't see that ever mentioned in the lecture. <laughs> Because, you know, I don't want to go through the revision. Um, this expression, I think you will see it in a lab manual, but you don't really need to memorize it or anything. When and if you need it, it will be given to you. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the, your textbook does this derivation. I, and I think it, it can be useful to read it through. Because um, it's a, kind of the similar analysis you saw with the wave of... Um, uh, speed of wave on a string and um, you are using pressure. Oh, one difficult would be we skipped chapter 14 so we quite haven't talked about uh, pressure and density. So to the extent that you can follow this please do. Um, if uh, you feel you are getting lost feel free to skip it. We skip it in lecture. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. It, um, I mean Ideal guess law, we don't cover it until volume two. So follow it to the extent that you feel you can. Uh, and if you feel lost at any place, feel free to skip it. 
<laughs> so with that, uh, let's move on to the next section. So sound intensity, this is an, um, an application of some of the things that you saw discussed in section 16.4, energy and power of a wave. And they talked about intensity, how it's defined. And this is an example of that. Uh, sound travels in three-dimensional space. And you can talk about intensity as power. P is for power, not pressure. Power divided by area. That'll give you the intensity of the sound wave. And uh, we have different units that measure intensity of sound specifically. Um, I mean, what per meter squared? That's a general unit for any wave. Amount of power per area squared. And if we scroll down, I think you will see some uh, other units that are more specific to measuring um, the intensity of the sound waves. One would be, uh, so human hearing, yeah, this is how we hear things. This is how you're hearing me. And uh, so sound intensity level, beta of a sound, is defined as this. And we usually refer to this as a decibel. And um, uh, so, so this is a kind of a good um, science C thing to know. Um, we don't spend any time on it on lecture. I don't think you even have any homework question on decibel. But decibel, how it's defined, it's a logarithmic scale. Good to know. Give it a read through. Um, and yeah, first thing will be 106 decibel. I think, uh, yeah, loud rock concert. It's, not that far from when your eardrums will burst, only a factor of 10,000. <laughs> so, in terms of the linear scale intensity, in decibel, it's only 40 decibel. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, so, so this is an application of intensity thing that you heard before that I said we are skipping. We are kind of skipping this as well. So, uh, give it a scheme for your own edification and um, for this definition of terms. But in the lecture, you won't really see us um, spend a lot of time on it. Uh, same thing with the normal modes of a uh, standing sound wave, I think, or, well, it depends on um, what you are referring to. So this kind of interference in two-dimensional space, we reserve that for physics for C. I think there is one lecture demo video that shows a demo with a ripple tank. That's kind of what this is, um, but we don't do anything with it homework-wise because we are saving this kind of two-dimensional uh, interference for physics for C. But uh, I think there's a other kind of interference that we do spend the time on, uh, or not. We'll see. This is about noise canceling. Um, that's how noise noise canceling uh, headphones work. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we do spend some time on. So this is an example of a standing wave. Uh, the, the resonance that you would see, that's an example of standing wave. And you have a lab that's based on resonance in a tube, close that one end. Um, so your textbook goes through description of that. Take a look at it, uh, different boundary conditions. Uh, you will see, well, you won't literally see it, but you will be able to hear the effect of these standing waves in the lab. This is the next uh, uh, wavelength that fits. These are the different uh, shapes that fits. This exact picture is what you should imagine uh, when you have uh, the, our standing waves in sound lab setup. And uh, your textbook also covers uh, resonance when it's uh, open at both ends. Um, we don't have that set up in our lab, but you can imagine setting up something like this. Some of the musical instruments can be modeled as a tube with the two open ends. Um, so, and I think that's uh, getting at the topic of the next section, which is the some of the most uh, practical applications of standing waves, uh, sources of musical sound. This is basically describing pipe instruments. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, musical instruments, woodwinds, brass, pipe organs, yeah, they're all pipe instruments, right? Um, and there will be string instruments, which should be a good example of a standing wave on a string. So. Uh, do they give examples of standing uh, string instruments? Yeah, here are the string instruments like guitar, is that violin? Yeah, violin. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, this uh, uh, we don't, I guess, uh, explicitly cover it, but uh, you know, uh, you have homework questions that refer to musical instruments. So yes, we do cover it. Yes, we are not skipping this section in the lecture. 
And uh, I mentioned that we covered two examples of wave interference phenomena. Standing waves was one that we covered in chapter 16. And now bits is the other wave interface phenomena that we cover. Uh, you have some examples of that in lecture, and uh, it's a fascinating phenomena. Um, I, uh, yeah, you 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 hear me demonstrate it in the recorded lecture. So look at that, and what bit sounds like when you hear it is a, like a wobbling sound um, with the amplitude going out and in, out and in, um, and that frequency of that uh, amplitude going out and in, that's called a bit frequency. And uh, you can see how um, you get a expression like that by adding these two waves with a slightly different frequency. Um, and you see me do that. Uh, so I guess they don't do it in the textbook. You see me do that in lecture. So take a look at the lecture. Yeah, so bit, it's a, uh, it's a fascinating phenomenon. <laughs> when wave packet, once you start talking about it, then uh, that reminds me of quantum mechanics. <laughs> and actually, um, uh, some of the quantum mechanical phenomena can be thought of as a bit phenomena. That's, uh, uh, I think, where the, the real application is. Otherwise, you know, you think, oh, yeah, you use that to tune instruments. What else do you use it for? Well, this is the mathematical basis for some of the quantum mechanical phenomena. Doppler effect, I think in the lecture, if we cover it, we just cover it very briefly. I think you have, um, might have a conceptual question on it, maybe. Um, so skim it, um, know where to look up the formulas if you need it. Um, uh, and the, with the Doppler effect, the kind of, you get different formulas depending on if it's the source moving or observer moving. So this is with a, a source moving, and um, there's the one with the observer moving, and you can combine those into this one complicated expression. And let me ease your mind. You are, you, one, you are definitely not going to have to memorize it. And if there's a homework question on it, it's like one or two. Just look at the formula, apply correctly to get answers. That's it. Uh, we'll just leave that there. The thing is, the kind of Doppler effect that's physically interesting actually work differently than the Doppler effect in sound. Because the Doppler effect that's physically interesting is Doppler effect in light. And uh, the formula for Doppler effect in light will not look like this. It'll, it will look different. And that's a topic of uh, physics 4C. Or, uh, yeah, physics 4C. Yeah, relativity. So uh, shock waves, I think we very briefly cover it in the sense that you have a conceptual question on it. That's it. <laughs> so, I mean, shock wave is something you get when uh, it's a, basically an extreme example of Doppler effect where the wave source is moving faster than wave speed. So you get, uh, you know, extreme version of Doppler effect on the front and you basically form a kind of conical thing. Uh, you can actually, I remember seeing it, I was walking by Lake Merritt, and um, you see a dog that's uh, swimming across the lake, and you see that kind of conical thing. That's an example of shock wave. The dog is uh, swimming faster than uh, speed of the water waves on the water, and that's why it forms that uh, the wake that uh, that's the shock wave. So. So yeah, you have a, a conceptual question on it, and that's basically it. Uh, we don't, um, so yeah, that, that is the exact example. I remember seeing like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, so, all right. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, it for chapter 17. It's application of uh, uh, waves, which themselves are application of mechanics. So it's application of, application of mechanical principles. This is the fun part. Uh, and. Um, and uh, I hope um, um, these examples of uh, practical um, phenomena give you some assurance that things that, that you learn in this class, yes, you do use them in real life, maybe. <laughs>